chapter one econometrics questions and data ask a half dozen econometrics econometricians what econometrics is and you get a half dozen different answers one might tell you that econometrics is the science of testing economic theories a second might tell you that econometrics is the set of tools used for forecasting future values of economic variables such as a firm's sales the overall growth of the economy or stock prices another might say that econometrics is the process of fitting mathematical uh, economic models to real world real world data a fourth might tell you that it is the science and art of using historical data to make a numerical or quantitative uh, policy recommendations in government and business in fact all these answers are right at a broad level Econometrics is the science and art of using economic theory and statistical techniques to analyze economic data. Econometric methods are used in many branches of economics, including finance, labor economics, macroeconomics, microeconomics, marketing, and economic policy. Econometric methods are also commonly used in other social sciences, including political science and sociology. This text introduces you to the core set of methods used by econometricians we will use these methods to answer a variety of specific quantitative questions from the worlds of business and government policy this chapter poses four of these questions and discusses in general terms the econometric approach to answering them the chapter concludes with a survey of the main types of data available to econometricians for answering these and other quantitative economic questions. 1.1 1. 1, Economic Questions We Examine Many decisions in economics, business, and government hinge on understanding relationships among variables in the world around us. These decisions require quantitative answers to quantitative questions. This text examines several quantitative questions taken from current issues in economics. Four of these questions concern education policy, racial bias in mortgage lending, cigarette consumption, and macroeconomic forecasting. Question number one, does reducing class size improve elementary school education? Proposals for reform of the U.S. public education system generate heated debate. Many of the proposals concern the youngest students, those in elementary schools. Elementary school education has various objectives, such as developing social skill. But uh, for many parents and educators, the most important objective is basic academic learning, reading, writing, and basic mathematics. One prominent proposal for improving basic learning is to reduce class sizes at elementary schools. With fewer students in the classroom, the argument goes each student gets more of the teacher's attention, there are fewer class disruptions, learning is enhanced, and grades improve. But what, precisely, is the effect on elementary school education of reducing class size? Reducing class size costs money. It requires hiring more teachers, and if the school is already at capacity, building more classrooms, a decision-maker contemplating hiring more teachers must weigh these costs against the benefits. To weigh costs and benefits, however, the decision-maker must have a precise quantitative understanding of the likely benefits. Is the beneficial effect on basic learning of smaller classes large or small? Is it possible that a smaller class size actually has no effect on basic learning.